Hi, uh, welcome to Two Non Doctors. I'm Liz Mealy. I'm Maria Shahada. Sorry, I just I can't even begin to tell you. Like my hair's frizzy, and I'm trying to like hide it behind a bandana, and then your hair is just like perfect Whitney Houston '80s volume. I want to dance with somebody. It's like okay, all right, hair. cool. I just got a haircut today, but I I didn't. I I didn't want it to be Whitney Houston, so I think you've ruined it for me. I was like loving this. I ruined it. It's beautiful. I don't want to be Whitney Houston. (laughs) It just has like volume esque. Like people would kill for that volume. I would murder for that volume. Pretty happy with the volume. Yeah, I was just hoping it would be like like a twenties bob, but maybe that's what Whitney was going for. But isn't that it all circles around? If we're in 2024 and it's the 90s right now, then probably 1985 was like their like flapper era. I don't know. <laughs> right. Yeah. The same so, way the 90s was very 60s. Yeah. Well, anyway, thank you. That's what I meant to say. <laughs> That's perfect. Thanks. Yeah. I I was like, let's just go shorter. Uh, I was like, shorter. Then shorter. <laughs> it's like do the chin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> and then she like, ended up really, really loving it. But yeah, because at first she was like, "I like your haircut now," and I was like, "I, I want to go shorter." But we're. But I'm here now. I'm here what about now. What paying- I want. <laughs> yeah, I'm here now paying you. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm here now paying you. I'm just a girl in front of her stylist <laughs> saying her to do what I've asked you to do. <laughs> <laughs> or you're just like. Okay. I so I'm trying to grow my hair back out long, but you know how it is with curly hair. When you have it go long, it starts to do this like flat top, like cartoon character like mom cartoon character. Like I don't know why it like any kind of heaviness with curls and they're like, We can't do this. I'm so I'm so tired. I just can't. <laughs> I just can't. So I was telling her, I was like, hair, hey, hair is dead. I'm, what do you want from me? What do you it, it's dead as soon as on the spot, dead. On the spot, dead. Um but I, I was like, hey, can we put some layers in it so that it'll have some volume? And she's like, well, if I put layers, you're going to look like this. And she started showing me like curly hair girl mullets. And I was like, and she's like a new stylist because my my last one moved to Long Island. And I was like, hey, I've had layers before. I know my hair is thin, but I don't think I'm immediately going to have a mullet. Like, I just don't. I just it's never happened before. Like, but it was it was like this back and forth where I was like, some layers like I came here for layers I wrote down layers you're like oh why are you here and I was like layers and they're like you want (laughs) you know what I mean like but and finally she did it and she was and it was perfect but I was just like we both know you know how to do layers we we know that I I would have been weary if she was like yeah it'll be a mullet it's like only because you've made it a mullet (laughs) yeah only because you're like she said layers. I heard mullet. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, mm, I don't think we're speaking the same hair language. Yeah. Why do I look like Billy Ray Cyrus? Layers. <laughs> no. Yeah. yeah. Layers. No, 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 <laughs> no, 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 no. She said, I want to look like my dad from the 80s. I'm saying I want pretty layers. She's like, I'm not hearing it. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, uh, and there's a lot of mullets out there. There's a yeah. lot of. I think intentional and unintentional mullets. And you know what? That's your thing. Huh? I'm loving the mullet look. I cannot. I just cannot. There's nothing about it. I feel like there's a certain generation of people that was just like, it was traumatic the first time. I will never get on board with this haircut. Ever. Ever. And I've not seen one person that I'm like, nailed it. You know what I mean? There's like every other hairstyle. I'm like, that looks good on you. Your head might be too big for that. Hey, hey, hey. That's no, that's a no. Um, I've never seen one person, woman, man, cool, not cool, seen a mullet and been like, that's the right choice. Yeah. Yeah. They've grown on me. I've seen people with them and I'm first I'm like, no. And then I'm like, yeah, that I I mean, that's your whole personality. (laughs) But it's it's a strong choice and I'm proud of the decision that you have made in your strong choices. I think the only like hair stylistic choice that I can't get on board with no matter who you are and it it will shape how I feel about you as a human is the goatee. Goatee. I hate goatees. Really? I mean, that is very nineties. Did you get bullied by a man? I didn't team. have to. It was a terrible look. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I'm every, so glad every it's not. Guy, 
yeah. don't think it's I don't think it's a nineties look that came back. I'm really happy about that. I find goatees yeah. just the ugliest thing in the world. Um along with the this the soul patch. That was very nineties. Ugh. Well, sorry. And then the little kind of uh sideburn. The little half side sideburn. See, all all those to me kind of depend. I've nope. seen I've seen people pull I mean the 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 patchy thing is a little it's a choice. But I really think it I don't know. I, I almost every other facial hair like it's just like like there's just some stuff let's put it this way like there's some outfits that i've seen on people and i'm like i wish i could pull that off i cannot pull it off you nailed it and then there's some people where i'm like i see that you saw that on someone else thought why not me <laughs> saw that it didn't work for you but tried to force it and it's just like don't force it it's not it's not for you it's not for you and it sucks like we're two very short people there's just some stuff that just doesn't work it's well, funny because when I was getting my hair cut, I was like, I wish I could wear long dresses. I'm too short for that. And then my stylist was like, you should just wear long dresses. Who cares? And then I just felt all free. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I should just wear long dresses. And you're here going, no, there are some things you can't do. <laughs> no, but that's but I don't think a long dress. I have long dresses and we're, I'm not that much taller than you. I think it's it's a the type and B it's you, you know how it is. There's just certain like it has to just be. If it's a long dress that's like and it has no shape to it, it's like, first of all, why are you hiding your shape? You have a lovely shape. But also, like, it's going to just make us look invisible, right? But mm. if it has a little bit of shape, and you can mimic that with, you can cinch it. Danny's going to watch this. This is what we did our entire childhood. Just cinch it. Just cinch what it. What do you mean cinch comic. it? It's from an SNL sketch in the 90s. It's, it was just like David Spade, um, Adam Sandler. They all worked at The Gap. And they would like, you know, they were dressed like women. They're just like, just cinch it. Just and just like put a belt on it. Just oh, okay. Cinch it. Just cinch <laughs> it. Um, pretty much my entire childhood. We would just be like, what do you think of this? Just cinch it. You should just cinch it. <laughs> um, no, I. So that's the thing is that like, I don't know. I, I don't have a torso. I know I don't have a torso. So I have to keep that in mind when I dress. You have I a torso. Have... It's just extra long. Oh, I, I feel like I don't have a torso at all. Oh. Oh, okay. Think, I've been tricked by your long cardigans. Yes, <laughs> years. forever. Not cardigans, yes, for, uh, tank tops. Yeah. Yes, for years. Just longer than necessary. Um, <laughs> it's, it's an all, it it's all an illusion. I'm like, it's like yeah. extra long. <laughs> <laughs> it's an illusion. I'm just like, where's her butt? Where does her butt start? Um, <laughs> but also, also, who gives a shit what anybody thinks of you? That's the other part of it. It's like, go wear, a, go have a mullet. Who? Why, why does my opinion matter? Go have a goatee. Why does your opinion matter? What if, it yeah. What if I Nothing. what if we signed on next week and I have a mullet and you're like this I can't I can't I, I, I <laughs> Why do you have to do this? You We're said up. <laughs> you said <laughs> well, I know you already live in Europe, so you're not stressing stress packing the way I am for Europe, but I am just my overpack, goal is pack. leave stuff here. And then we can hop on over to Europe with less. Than, nope, that's not working. Shaking your head already. No, I'm doing. I'm doing so little that I know I'm gonna kick myself. I am going because I hate like. So the biggest thing about hopping from city to city is that you have to repack every night, right? Mm -hmm. And when you have a lot of stuff, it just you never pack as well as you did the first time. I'm like rolling things. Things are in certain spots so I can find them, but. If I was staying somewhere for a week, it doesn't matter if you kind of overpack because it's just like you got to do it once when you get there and once when you leave. But when it's there's lots of room, you could be a little sloppier about it. I can buy little knickknacks if I want knickknacks. I'm going real light. Okay. I'm going, I respect that. I'm going t-shirt and jeans. I'm going comfy on a plane in a train. I'm going real light. Yeah, I, want, I mean, I want somebody to pick up my bag and think I'm doing like a like a like a money drop off. Like I, I left the funds <laughs> in a bathroom. This girl's a criminal. I've never seen a <laughs> lady's pack bag so light, dude. Oh. So we went. So no, no. I um, it's my fine. It's my favorite stranger compliment. Um, I went to the I went to the I went to Puerto Rico after Christmas with Evan, and he was like. You know, you fly JetBlue. JetBlue has become like because there's only certain flights that go to Puerto you Rico. Went to Puerto Rico. Yeah, I went to Puerto Rico. How am I your like best friend? Right, right, right. right? I didn't know about that at all. You did. 
Um, it was for four days after Christmas. You were busy. You were I didn't Edinburgh. know about that. It's it's fine. It's how fine. was it? It was great. Thank you for asking. <laughs> um, but Evan was like, "Hey, it's like you know, it's like JetBlue is like one of the only people that goes direct there, and it's become like almost a like a budget airline." And he was like, "Pack light." So I had just like a tiny duffel bag and my little backpack, and we rented a car, and we're waiting for them to like drop the car off, and the and I put my bags in the back, and the woman's like. I've never seen anybody pack so light in my life. And I was like, (laughs) like Evan was like, oh my God. I was like, I literally was just like, I'm sorry. Can you say that into a recorder? Um, (laughs) I am. I was like, he's like, he said, I think she said woman. She's never seen a woman pack so light, but she probably has never met a woman that like did not care. I packed like a bathing suit, a pair of shorts and like my contacts. And I was like, and sunscreen. And I was like, we'll figure it out. Yeah. But this trip is different because like, I would normally just be like, all right, I'll have like two outfits that I just switch between. But mm-hmm. we have to take pictures and stuff and videos. And I don't want to be wearing the same thing. I learned that mistake from our August tour. I was like, that dress again? That fucking dress again? So sick of it. <laughs> it does help. I mean, I'm doing I'm doing like five, six shirts. Oh, the other thing is washing your stuff in ho- hotel technology has changed, right? Like I used to bring the pods and I would like pierce the pods and I would do like, you know, um, bathtub sink washing. But now there's these little strips. So I brought a bunch of little washi strips, like paper strips to wash my clothes. I'm very excited. You bring me some? Where do I get those? Uh, No, I'll take a picture. Has that technology not come to the UK? Not heard of it, but I'll look. I love just like a cat <laughs> coming in the background. Your cat, like, yeah, but he came in like he was about to murder you. Well, also he came out of screen, then he comes behind me, and then like it like feels like an illusion where he's like, and eh, eh. um, <laughs> he's been so annoying today. Um, okay, so yeah, I'm in the middle of packing. I'll probably have to borrow stuff. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, we'll switch outfits. Perfect um and yeah i'm excited to see i see you tomorrow i know that's crazy i was just I thinking that like, just like that's... i pop in i'm like here we're on the screen and then it's like hug <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> hugging you <laughs> yeah oh. um yeah that's nuts like all oh, this all happened so quickly um <laughs> ghost is like i'm here too <laughs> <laughs> hi i'm a carry on <laughs> <laughs> you brought the wrong cat yeah, yeah. A hundred percent. I'm lunchbox all the way, baby. Yeah, I know. Everybody's team lunchbox. Ghost every day is losing fans. He needs to stop biting faces. Yeah, he really does. Then you can keep your fans. You hear that, Ghosty? Ghosty's like, whatever. I don't I'm not here for other <laughs> I am who I am. Yeah, I got I'm gonna mullet tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Why who else turned away from him? Uh, everybody. Um, Sam was pretty team. Sam doesn't like long haired cats, so he was pretty team ghost. But um, ghost has just been bitey and annoying, and <sighs> so, yeah. he's just he's not making fans. No, he's problematic. You need to he's like not. send him to military school or something. Yes, cat cat military school, which is just them weaving through like cat toys and. I know, but they do it in their cute little military outfits. <laughs> I bet I would make a lot of money opening up a cat military school. There is, what is it, the Russian cat circus? I think we could do some kind of American version of that, but like it's just them not listening and yeah. like ordering frappuccinos or something. <laughs> he loves straws. Whatever. He, whatever. he just <laughs> he steals straws. Like you can't like if I get like a coffee or a bubble tea and I turn my back, I literally hear like He's like just squeaking as he steals a straw. Um, he's 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 a bad he's a he's becoming a bad cat. If I'm being honest, and I I love that you say becoming. Um, he's always been a bad cat, Liz. And I raised him. I know, I, but I you did such a great job with Lunchbox that I don't blame you. I think it's just a personality he was born with. I think it took you a long time to see it because you're his mom. But yeah. he's always been bad. I can't actually argue that. 
Um, we should do some quick announcements, especially since they're pertinent. Um, this one comes out next week. We will be in Berlin. No, 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 London. This is going to pass because London's on Sunday. Right. I'm sorry. You're doing great. You're, you're fine. I knew what I was doing, but I don't want to bother explaining why I said London. But okay, go on. <laughs> you're fine. London's done. You missed London, guys. Um, we're going to be in uh, Berlin, Frankfurt, Heldeberg. Heldeberg? I won't Hel be. You won't be. You'll. Where will you be? Weisbaden. Weisbaden. <laughs> None of these are real places. Um, <laughs> uh, Paris. Karlsruhe. Brussels. Ruhe. Amsterdam. Yeah. Amsterdam. Uh, Geneva, Zurich, um, Munich, Munich, and then I'll be in Istanbul. Um, all that stuff is on my website, on your website. Um, I have a new website. Uh, I don't think oh. it's still. Yeah, it's hopefully gonna launch today. It might have not launched yet when okay, you check it, but by the time they check it, it'll be new. Um, you very excited. It? Um, I needed it to be simpler. I needed it to be like more direct. I I wasn't keeping things up to date. Um, you know, when people like book you and they like take pictures and bio and I would get mad because it would be out of date. And then I'd go to my website and it's like on my website, like the pictures on my website. Like, so it's just oh, like, right. you know what I mean? Yeah. Although somebody advertised me with a picture from when I was 21 and they were like, in my defense, you look exactly the same. And I was like, that's <laughs> very nice. That's very nice. Also not true. Um, but I just, you know, I I get pictures like every couple of months, like take like takes two seconds to ask me, is there a perfect picture I prefer? That being said, a booker was like, hey, um, if you want to update your bio and picture, send it to me. So I sent him my new picture. I sent him my new bio and he goes, can I edit your bio? And I was like, sure. And he goes, can I just use the other picture? And I was like, sure. <laughs> like, I was like, what are we doing here? Like, what are we, what are we doing here? Uh, I'm just like so busy that I was all proud of myself for actually emailing him back right away. And then he just did whatever he wanted. And I was like, what are we, what are we doing here? Why are we interacting? Just, yeah, fine. Do what you want. Yeah. But we're on tour together. We're in the middle of our tour. Um, please come see us. It's a lot of Germany. I get to do, we're doing a bunch of new cities. I'm very excited. Um, I have a new hour. It's called Space Camp. Um, I just officially uh, got my new date. I'm going to be taping Space Camp September 15th at the Bell House. Um, hopefully tickets will be out by the time this comes out. But if not, they should be out in the next week or so. Um, so if you want to go to a taping and you want to see my new hour in New York, it's there. I thought right. you were retaping murder sheets. Yeah, I just keep retaping murder sheets over and over. Well, again. No, I thought because of because of the whole fiasco. Yeah, but what would be the point of that? Like, okay, one, I, I'm, I'm over it. But two, like, I talked to, so I'm gonna actually put out a video soon. Um, I don't have I talked to. I don't even remember if I talked about it on here that my YouTube special got flagged for using the c word. Um, I call my cat the c word. Uh, fifty one minutes and thirty seconds into my act. Um, the the rules for YouTube is that you just can't curse in the first seven seconds and you can't have any profanity or anything like obscene in your thumbnail. But like minor cursing is like fine. Um, turns out the C word is hate speech. <laughs> hmm. um, didn't know. I literally have been talking about it on stage. I was like, I need to apologize to my sister immediately. And I guess all of the UK is canceled. Like, I don't understand <laughs> how the C word is hate speech. Whatever. So they flagged my special. It got limited ads, um, meaning I'm making like 30 to 80 percent less uh, ad revenue than my previous specials. And they say they don't do this, but I can I can see it. I'm getting less reach because they're making less money at, off me. I'm getting less reach and my specials not doing as well as my other specials. I'm very angry and upset about it. Um, regardless, I talked to Fahim Anwar Anwar. Anwar. Mm -hmm. um, he had something similar happen to him. Um, and he, mine happened 48 hours after I released it. His happened like three hours after he released it. So he was like in panic mode and they edited out, like if his thing was an hour, they edited it down to like 40 minutes and they released a censored version, um, an edited censor censored version like the next day. And I talked to him about it and he was like, honestly, he's like, it just, they youtube doesn't like when you have like the same stuff put put out there okay and so like i think his original 
uncensored special is like 150,000. His censored one is like 25,000. Neither of them are doing um, any different. You know what I mean? Even though he took about 20 minutes off it. So it just, I, I, I talked to him for a while about some options. You know, I've talked to YouTube. Nobody, it's all a clusterfuck, honestly. So um, I'm just trudging along, hoping people discover it organically because YouTube isn't going to help. So tell people about it. Murder Sheets. Murder Sheets, guys. Go see Murder Sheets. I'm really proud of it. Um, and um, if you do see me live, I have a whole new hour called Space Camp. <sighs> but yeah, I'm going <laughs> to... I'm just like, uh, I'm making a video today to kind of like talk to fans about it because it's like, they don't know. They, I mean, they don't even know. Like, that's the thing that I was talking to Evan about it. He was just like, well, how much money have you made from the other ones? I was like, just enough to cover my expenses. Like, this is the horrible part about it is that like, I don't actually make that much money from the specials. Like the specials cover the expenses I paid for. But what helps is I make new fans and those fans come and see me live and I'm not making new fans off of this. So it's like I kind of just did it. I didn't do a special for nothing. I don't want to say that because I'm proud of it. I love it. The first month doesn't depict the li the lifespan of a special and people mm -hmm. can discover it anytime. And I don't want to just say I did it for nothing because I performed it for a year. I'm proud of it. It'll be there forever. Um, but I... I'm probably not going to make my money back on this, which is hard to go into the next one where, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the only thing that helps to do the next one is that at least I wasn't in debt from the last one. So yeah. it's like that kind of stuff. So it's like, it's like, I don't know. It's so hard to to tell, like, you know, you see my specials, they have millions of views, but it's like, you don't get a dollar per view. That's not how it's working. So it's, it's, it's based on like per thousand. So I actually went through and like looked at how much money I made per special. It's really interesting. Maria Banford's been like a real influence on like um, uh, financial uh, transparency mm -hmm. because I think I think it's important for other comics to know. You know what I mean? But I yeah, think it's also definitely. important. I think it's important for your fan base to know because, you know, it's we all laugh. Like if you look up your name, it'll tell you what you're it'll tell you who you're married oh, to. My net like, worth is yeah, insane. Your like, net worth. What is this based on? Oh, dude, I remember Joe Zimmerman had one and he's like, I'm worth 10 million. Where's my money? He's like, yeah. I want money. He's like, who has my 10 million dollars? But it's like, I don't know if what they're I would love to know what that's like based off of and who's doing that. Like, that's crazy to me. But like it is like I, I wrote it down like um, um, self help me. I spent seventeen thousand dollars and I made seven thousand dollars and it has one point nine million views. Oh, do you know I what I mean? You made and more than that. Yeah, it's I made I made Ghost of Academic Future. I spent six thousand dollars making and I made twelve thousand. So I was able to make money off that. I would say for self help me, I was able to make money through sound exchange. So I ended up making most of my money back on self help me. And I also like that was the first time self producing a special. So I learned from my mistakes and I was able to spend clearly about $10,000 less money on it on the mm. last one. And I went more like low budget for the ghost of the academic future. But like, self help me, you know, that's almost 2 million views. And I made a little over seven thousand dollars and then ghost of academic future is about 1.1 million views and i made almost thirteen thousand dollars and some of that has to do with how many ads you put in oh i see okay it's it, and that's the other thing is like with my ads being limited i still have ads but they're not a not because what i said is considered hate speech the ad people have to decide if they want to be associated with hate speech so there's less people that want to be. a. So that's what's funny about it is like some guy left a comment that was like, um, uh, I hope Liz is making money from these ads because they are bizarre. <laughs> and it's all like poop cleanses. So apparently poop cleanse companies are like, hate speech. Don't we all you know say what's close it? To the <laughs> <laughs> um, so it is. Um, it's been I've learned a lot. I've learned a yeah. lot, guys. I've learned a lot about speech and, you know, mistakes were made unintentionally. And and also the Internet's changing. I mean, the Internet is 
because ads rule everything. Think about how like when you would do a late night set, you would have to like not say certain stuff and you couldn't belittle certain people because, you know, CBS or, you know, um, whatever made money off ads. But now things are coming more and more online and people are making money off ads and they don't want to risk it. And you have to censor yourself. Yeah. And the Internet is becoming like the new cable. That was inevitable. It wasn't sure. always going to be the Wild West. It was like, yeah. Sure. But it's like. They were never going to just let us make all the money. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, but why not? So they did change the rules. That's the other thing is not change the rules, but they've been more explicit. Like As of April, because I put my thing out April 2nd, as of April 24th, they like because of me and Fahim and a couple of other comics. And now explicitly says, like, if you say the N word, if you say that F word, like not the. But they didn't not say the C word. I still think you should sue. Take you two down. Yeah, with with what money? <laughs> <laughs> um, YouTube. So like, yeah, you know we're gonna shut down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. This podcast. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I love about John Oliver. Like John Oliver. Well, I think AT and T owns. Does AT and T something owns Max, or they're in bed with yeah. somebody? There's mm-hmm. some cell company that's in bed with with HBO or, you know, you know, they all own each other or whatever. And he'll call it he'll, he always calls it um, Network Daddy. He's just like, oh, we're shitting on Network Daddy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and that's what it feels like shitting on YouTube. I'm like, fuck YouTube. If you could like and subscribe, that would <laughs> <Yeah>. be great. <laughs> you can give to our Patreon. Um, but um, yeah, that's that's my drama. It's it's silly and it's I mean, it affects my livelihood, but it's also like I called my cat the C word in my little in my little skit. And now I can't. Now you're paying. Now I'm paying for it. Just makes me angry. Anyway, yeah. uh, like and subscribe. Follow us. Where can they follow us, Maria? At two non doctors. Um, number two forward doctors on Twitter and YouTube at two non doctors, number two DRS on Instagram. You can write to us if you have any comments, questions or whatever at two non doctor. No, sorry. Two non doctors at gmail.com. Um, follow me at Maria Shahada. Yeah. Hey, Liz Mealy. Yeah. So I did my work in progress. Do you know how I was like trying to like turn my show into theater? Yeah. It Like I did it at the Bill Murray, which is a comedy club. And I did it like, right after a pro show so i had gone on last on that show i did well so people stayed to see this (laughs) but i didn't tell them it was like a total 180 it was like the 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 10 minutes was like bang 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 joke 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 and then then i'm like when i was five my dad left me at school and he didn't pick me (laughs) up you know and they're like what the fuck is going on but i i just don't think i think i had a hard time with it just because it was like this mix that um, it didn't, I don't think it went bad. I just like the one person who I wanted to come see it, like this producer saw it and said it was too stand up y and that she wanted to hear more of the story. But like, you know, I got compliments and stuff after, but it was just like, I, I did have like my feet in both worlds and I didn't know how to navigate. Like, I felt like an obligation to perform jokes because I, I just felt like the story, what, I don't know. I was just like, I don't know. I was just performing it. So what? Right. So I read the story and I performed the jokes. But I don't think it's necessarily working. But it's also you said it was a work in progress, right? Yeah. 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 I don't know. I mean, we've talked about this in private. I, I, I think that's what I like about Mike Berbiglia's one man shows is that it's extremely funny while having a cohesive story. I, I've never. I appreciate both camps, right? The 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 one woman one man show and um the presentation of a narrative in this format and I appreciate stand up and even stand up I would say like this next hour like Space Camp has a narrative like it has a beginning middle and end um in a way that I, uh, mine never have. It's still stand up but a lot more storytelling, but I don't I don't know. I I I fight back on the fact that it has to be one or the other, like, cause also, in, unless you truly want to walk away from your, unless you want to completely do something different with this in the sense that 
it's well more... i did initially because i think there is some stand-up that just doesn't serve the story so it's like i could probably omit that i don't know i just brought it up because it's just an interesting thing i've been trying to do it's like a totally different world and i'm like i need to stop doing it in the world i know which is stand-up comedy and like do it in a theater next time and just I see how it, has... it goes because i just felt obligated to do stand-up it's also how people know you as well. Like I've learned over time, like my scripts are really dark. I would say they're like dark comedies and more um, more dark than comedy. And every time they're like, why don't you do something like your stand up? And I was like, but I already do my stand up. Like my, this is my stand up's my stand up. This is a different yeah. <laughs> expression. Yeah, about Yeah, this is about murder. Um, the other one was about sheets. It's different, <laughs> different. <laughs> Different. murder sheets murder people murder people. one's funny Different. one's very dark yeah one's very dark but it is like i reread i reread one of my first scripts and i was like this is fucking good and nobody fucking like is looking at it because they see me like you know how like um women used to have like alias names be like a man wrote this so like people take it seriously oh yeah yeah I almost have to be like like an author wrote this so like, people, <laughs> like this is yeah. really good writing yeah like it's just so frustrating that like people see you the same way that I think when artists want to change musical genres, right? Like, you yeah. know, somebody as a rapper, you know, somebody as country and they want to go into pop or they want to go into, you know, whatever. It's like some people are able to get away with it, but some people, they lose their entire fan base because they're like, no, you, this is what you do. And I said, this is what you do. And you're like, no, 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 no. I'm complex. There's so many sides of me. <laughs> so complex. <laughs> I cry. I cry more often than you would realize. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, right. You know, yeah. So it is fun and it's like interesting to to expand my skill set, I guess. So it's just it's all been a process. It's just it's just interesting. Um I don't think the work in progress was bad or good. I think it was useful. And that but that isn't that a hundred percent what it's supposed to be? Yeah. Then yeah, you nailed absolutely. it. Thanks, Muffin. Yeah, uh, we have four minutes each. <laughs> four, why? Why do we only have four minutes? Um, four minutes each. So we have seven minutes left. Oh, I was like, what? <laughs> Sorry. Um, so uh -oh. quick, quickly with Google's. Uh, Google's. Yeah, you go first. Okay, mine. I might have talked about it a little bit, but my Google was: Can cats have food aversion due to boarding? Because mm -hmm. lunchbox. Ugh. Lunchbox has basically not eaten his regular food for like two weeks and is driving me nuts. He boarded for like two weeks and they're really good for He doesn't sit in a cage like he sleeps in a cage, but like they roam around, they get played with. Like it's not like a typical boarding situation because it's my parents old animal hospital. But he's been he's such a sensitive baby and so, he hates boarding so much and any kind of change he gets weird. And so this is the longest he's ever been like this. And he just hates his his wet food. And so um, my mom said he would be fine in a couple of days, but it's been two weeks and now I'm leaving again. He's not boarding. I, I asked my brother to stay with me or stay at my place and take care of him. And I'm very, very grateful. But basically it says the main reason is stress, though a cat's total refusal to eat can also be caused by learned food aversions and physical discomfort. So there's a lot of food aversion if like they ate that food and they were nauseous or they were sick or whatever. They might associate being nauseous with that food. Um, a cat will very simply decide to not eat. Anorexia is most commonly a reaction to stress caused by environmental change, such as hospitalization, hospitalization and boarding. And then it says, um, how, and then I said, how long does cat food aversion last in cats? Cats with nausea may develop a learned aversion to certain foods. Often this happens when cats eat before an episode of nausea or vomiting. These versions can last up to 40 days in cats, so it's best to avoid accidentally causing a version by feeding a desired long-term food to a cat who is nauseous. So the 40 days was like, oh, well, that's annoying as shit. Um, so he's eating, so I basically got him, I was talking to my mom about it, and I was like, well, he's eating, if I put this like shredded chicken 
over his chicken, normal chicken loaf, he'll eat just the shredded chicken. And if I mix it in, he'll eat maybe a little bit more. And if I just give him shredded chicken, he only eats the shredded chicken. And my mom was like, so just give him shredded chicken. I go, first of all, first <laughs> of all, I made chicken loaf. I opened a can of chicken loaf. I bought 40 cases of chicken loaf. We're eating chicken loaf. We're not eating You're such a shredded mom. chicken. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is, this, what am I, a restaurant? Like, I'm just so <laughs> mad at him where I'm just like, it's chicken loaf. It's always been chicken loaf. You've never had a problem with chicken loaf. So the thing is, I would just give him the shredded chicken. I would just give in to his episode of food aversion and give him the shredded chicken. But he has a sensitive tum-tum and he'll have diarrhea. And I've been fighting his sensitive tum-tum diarrhea for months. And I just got him to, because I had to go from kitten food to adult food. And he was all like squishy on the inside. And the chicken loaf has been good for him. And when you start to put different food, especially that stuff has gravy, that's why he loves it. He starts to get wiggly inside. So he can't just have shredded chicken. The other thing is, it's like, he's fat. He's super fat. He's almost 15 pounds. He is too fat. Don't watch your face. I see your face. It's inappropriate. I'm he's doing so the best though. I can. He's, a big he's so cute. He's so cute. He <laughs> is fully round. He is a circular. But I do. I don't want him to get bigger. It's probably not a big deal that he's not eating all his food. But at the same time, it's like he needs to get his the, at least the necessary calories in. So like my brother's coming to stay and he came over yesterday and I'm like, so this is what you do. And da, 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 da. And he's like, so you can't just give him full shredded chicken. I was like, no, why does nobody understand? <laughs> but now looking back, he's done this like three times when I brought him home initially when he was a kitten, he was he didn't eat for like three days. I was like freaking out. And I called the shelter and the shelter's like, he's always eating. He loves to eat. And I was like, what is this? And then two other times when I've had to board him, he's been weird about food. So it's like, I, I mean, the, the cat's going to get his way. I'm, I'm going to try to do less. I don't want to do long tours for my own food aversion, anger towards just being away. But goddamn, he is stressing me out. Oh. So, so food aversion just because he associates it with boarding and he hated it. That's pretty much what's happening. He's like, I hate it there. And the smell of this makes me think of captivity and I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, he's, you know, he'll start eating again and I'm glad it's not more serious. Yeah. And he'll, he'll eat the dry food. Oh, but the dry food I've got two is minutes. Also okay. Go, go, go. <laughs> I'm going to cut you off there. Um, no, mine was mine was because uh, I, I got my hair cut today. My stylist is 27 and she was, talking about getting Botox and I was like why and then it's preventative Botox so people are no, in their 20s it's are not Botox. real it's not real well so that's what I thought right and I told her told her I was like you don't need to do that it's not real it's probably you don't know what the long-term effects are and it's probably gonna fuck you up so just don't but then I was googling it and then nobody took my side and even the Washington Post article was like yeah yeah it, it's fine um there are issues yeah. with Botox in general I'm like that's not what I'm asking I'm asking what happens when you use too much Botox for too long or just Botox for too long. And it just seemed like it actually kind of worked. They did a study on twins. One twin had to Botox for 13 years. The other one didn't. The one that didn't use or that did do Botox had less wrinkles. So. Ah, dude, like it's you're so it, there's a half life to Botox. So every time you use it, it works less and less. That's so if I you're going to. So if you're going to do it when you're 27, when you want to use it, when you're 37, 47, but the point or whatever, is, is you won't need to use it because you've been doing all that preventative stuff. But I'm just like, why not? Why don't you just wait and then use it? Like, why do you have to commit to 13 years? A Botox isn't cheap, by the way. It is not. So. I, I, I don't know. I have no desire to do it. I of, of all well, the things like, you, you can can't be do preventative. Like you've already got the wrinkles. You would just be doing Botox. Thank you. Um, <laughs> Can we just end it there? <laughs> okay. Well, this was this has been two non doctors. This is our last episode. 